they're still there. Folks, they're still there. They're not supposed to be there, but they are. That's everybody that's not properly responding to this obvious crime against people around the world. It's pretty fascinating. I just really realize how much we talk about the founding fathers. I just keep thinking about how young those guys were to come together with the awareness of the world without all the connections. They knew what the problems were they tried to solve. And the more I work on what we are trying to do to try and expose where you are, where each one of you might be that has an in t interest to do this, to try and stop this very clear fraud against everybody to, for yourself, protect yourself, because this is going to go into the future, folks. It's not just the news you hear. This is a whole plan set up. It's still moving forward. No one has uh, stopped it. There's a couple of decisions, but you're going to have to step up, and you're going to know how. You just can't talk about it. It's going to take some practice. And the more I do this, the more I'm finding out how far away we are from the knowledge that used to be in the world from people that didn't even have the connection to the world as much as we we, we do today. And so we're going to, we're facing a very interesting time, if nothing else, and certainly not going to be looking so well, but interrupting this current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricket 2 Busting Episode BTW RLM 392. As we just keep plugging away, and just, folks, you need to understand this. You just can't say resist. There's a thing to do, not just talk. And behind the woodshed, I give you tools, pathways, suggestions to consider, things to go understand, how to look, uh, perceptions to start maintaining, and if you're going to be effectual to protect yourself or others. Where do I get the sum of that? How am I supposed to talk so well? Because we've been, I've been doing this for quite a, quite a long time, where we I took a new view on what we're really up against, really looked at the honesty of the problem. We aren't a free people, not just giving it lip service. But it's like being in a prison. Even a prisoner has a communication system. And utilizing that system, that language, it can cause trouble, if nothing else, and keep you from being more in trouble. And so I've advocated to a lot of people, decide how to make a record so that you get, the way this place is wired, and we are treated administratively, you get to throw things into question, and until those are resolved, you have a protection to start. The step up from that is to actually try to get a corrupt court to look at the problem. And yes, I get a bit of snickers about that. Oh, you're going to the system. No, you're going to the captor, and you're showing them how the captor, who has a conscience somehow, to someone else, even though they're amoral, they have a thought about what it looks like, what's going on. And the, the, the that, that bar of what it looks like in the comparison is really dropping lower and lower. And so we don't have much, uh, I don't want to come to the imperative. There's always going to be a hope ever into the future, but it's going to be a few people that are only going to pull it off. And something's going to inspire everybody. It won't be certainly be me, but otherwise I think it would have happened by now. And so I'm really just a placeholder at this point, trying to ho hoping that the information I pass to you will be held, and because it's not being used, and passed on to someone who may need it, who may make that break. And my past recent experience in the last 15 years or so, or maybe a little lot longer, in, in substantial foundational principles has really allowed me to see and feel. And again, I wasn't, I didn't initiate coming behind the woodshed to broadcast. I was told I should. I'm really not the guy to be doing this, I don't think. But I do this anyway. And the experience I have is found when it's applied to be advantageous. When I apply it, it's got us through things that were things that were going down the wrong path. And let's say the fire, the fires in the West, uh, how to engage that so that we, and up until this last arson season, literally arson season, uh, the natural fire season was exacerbated by these idiots, uh, these as we're coming, seeing these min, uh, minor demons in the world that decided that people were somehow the, as I mentioned in a, in, a, in a Twitter, people are the comorbidity. They call you humans. And the, and the code, the law, the government treats humans as animals. And you all haven't figured this out. You'll talk about it, but you haven't figured out how that make, might work and how you move yourself aside it so that you can get back to what the, the, those young people that started this place uh, kind of understood and what they were all about and what they were trying to do. 
and we get back to at least that far, which we are so far away. And anyway, so I don't know what more to say to people. I know people have given up, or they just think it's going to go blow by them. And some of you, that's that's going to happen. But there's some of you out there that realize there's a real uh, nastiness, uh, and you're in, involved in it. In fact, I may to tell you quickly here, before I forget, uh, I haven't been able to get to my emails for a couple. I think about two weeks now, and a couple of you, you know, I haven't lost you, but I had to do a deep dive into some specific information, and in order to that I didn't plan on doing that, in order to continue a condition, and then something else came up, and uh, and it's an it was an immediate thing. I, I try to balance the the things coming at me. I certainly can't take on so much, but I can. Again, I tell you, there's a pathway you can follow. I can give you the heads up and get you there quicker. Uh, before another technical note, I uh, apparently last night may have lost my backup power supplies and I um, if I go down I'll try and get back but there's no guarantee here right now today until I can figure out what's up it, again right at the last minute it's now giving me problems but anyway just so that if you know anybody that's syndicating I'll try and get right back online if I can if it doesn't take my system out completely uh, but uh, moving on now uh, this is something for us I know lots of people listen Maybe they're inspired with what I say. They're inspired with the way I say it. Maybe you, you listen because you just want to argue with me and how how useless it all is and futile. And and, and I've told you, you can use the, even that futility to your advantage if you just would. But I'm not here to argue with really anybody. I'm here to show you we are in a, the, not just that we're in the trouble. We see that we're in the trouble. We see the trouble that can be brought on to us. I'm here to say there are things that we can do to address it. We're not helpless. And again, talking, saying, resist is not going to do it. Protesting, just for the sake of protesting, is not going to do it. Going in the streets may be good and inspirational for people, but that's not really what you need to be doing. You, you need to infiltrate that very same system that the critters are hiding inside and do things that are objectively reasonable that they can't use against you in order to oust them. Because I look at this very, and I say that particular word, and you you acknowledge it's an ousting. You're going to get someone out, even in a quo warranto. What's your warrant to be in this office is an ouster. And so we're going to oust them because what you don't really, I'll tell you, and you kind of acknowledge it, but you don't really appreciate it, I don't think, actually. And I think that because until I actually did the archive study, went to the state archives and looked at the one of the overthrows, one of the occupations, I didn't truly appreciate what was going on. Once I saw it, it was like once you see anything, you can't unsee that. And you have an insight that no one else has. And so until a lot of you start to see the words and see how this has worked, I'm just noise at some level, but I'm an interest maybe, maybe not even that. You turn on five minutes and you're gone. Then you think, I got other things. I got to go listen to some other guy that just got 100,000 viewers on their YouTube. You know, who are you, this guy behind the woodshed? He only has a couple hundred on Twitter. He's been here for almost 10 years. That's all he's got is 200. Yeah, I think you want to consider some of that. I think you want to consider how that works and what, what your time is being drawn into and how ineffectual your continuing complaints are and how few people are really interested to actually extricate themselves from an occupation that's moved in, at least one. There's a whole bunch of them, actually. And these occupations then supported each other. And so when, once you see this, and it's not all of a sudden now, it, you, to me, it's a, it is the war that we're in. It's not a war we can walk from, even though lots of people might make, a, make the discussion about that and throw their hands up. And, and it's not like a big deal. And as far as it's not the big deal we're after, we're actually after the little ones. Where we are, where we stand, the ones we can defend, the ones we can uh, uh, prosecute, the problems we can solve local to us. If that starts with us, that's where it starts. If it starts with our family, then it goes to there. Once it goes outside there, we see maybe our neighbor, who's a really good neighbor, and wants to gain an ally with, and, and gain an, an ally with you, then we go to that one. If this is going to be a long digging out process, and a lot longer, as I move in through this, look, I'm talking to this COVID stuff, and what are you supposed to do, and it's all written down, and no one can go read or understand what they read, I'm realizing really how far away we are from those young guys that were audacious enough to believe they could make a nation and started something, actually did something that I look back on. And, yeah, we didn't do it perfectly. And, yeah, the condition may have been a little different than it is today. But, you know, we're not any different in some regard than the day before they started the place. And we are so far less knowledgeable about the world about that, even though we have all the connections and we can talk about all the things that are going wrong. None of us understand and have the wherewithal enough to do what we need to do. 
and those that have the spirit to and actually can roll their sleeves up and start, we're so far away from the mechanics of how that works. It's, it's really a, pathetic in, in us as a society. So I'm here again today. Uh, we're going to go off a little different track. We'll get back to the normal stuff because it's so darn important. But I need to kind of maybe take a break here moving into the nature of things. I kind of like, this is what I'd rather be investigating, actually. It's partly what well, it doesn't matter. I've had to focus my whole life into it, what I've chosen to do, my choice, to try and figure out what, what this uh, war is against people generally in the world. It's now flourished and shown itself globally in, in this thing called COVID, which we now, if it's not clear to you that it's a political angle that advanced Greta, Greta was advancing, and then on and beyond, I don't know really what to say to people. You're not well-read enough, and that's not enough to know that. You have to move into, okay, how do we address it? That is one of the specialties I've been doing. In fact, I was talking to a colleague of mine who he went through that. He came in through that. That was his interest, and I pointed him through the direction coming through how they've done to us this thing that they've done and how to defeat it. And he's been utilizing this this mentorship to great advantage. We were talking the other day about this COVID, and I said, do do you really? Because he talked about you know, I'd, when you type in some of these words, you get environmental laws and environmental rules and, and environmental councils. And, envir- and I said, yeah, don't you know that your health statutes are in environmental stat- code anymore? You know, those of you that listened and, and thought about what I said and maybe you applied things in Australia, did you, I told you that. I said, you're looking, and this is environmental law. And so when you think this is coming up and it doesn't uh, pertain I told you this place was rewired before you got here to implement and help implement, and your non-response will help implement this very thing that we're watching that comes under a health crisis fraud, but is actually an environmental fraud. It's an environmental imposition to pass a political agenda and transform your societies. As I say, I've been considering this quite extensively since I hear everybody say the word reset. It's not a reset. These people aren't resetting anything. They're not reconfiguring something to make it better. They're transforming your societies globally. And they're doing it. And COVID was a perfect witness for everybody if you haven't figured it out. But let me get over to the the things in nature, the things that these, uh, these minor demons are putting upon you that you allow, the sin, if you will. Now we're talking the syndemic. Remember that word came up? Well, that might be coming up for next broadcast. I've got some late... Like a compilation of late information. It was blitzed onto the world here a few weeks ago. It, it, it is what I thought it was, but now it's even more more so. We're going to watch this shifting now to try and move move the what was communicable. And you see this happening, the communicable disease so-called. They can't prove it, and so they're just going to head and move it now into non-communicable. So they're going to take everything that was supposed to be novel and they protect against it. And there's no actual law in the country to do this, but they're going to make any any non-communicable disease something that you get to do, that they get to have track and trace on it because we're all got disease. As I said in the Twitter today, you humans, they consider you animals, are a comorbidity to environmental health of the world, the earth, to this green religion. And if you're missing that point, you're going to miss the whole show and you're going to be wondering what the heck's up. But anyway, getting back to the real nature, not the denial of the sun and claiming climate change is caused by this little molecule carbon. Uh, the real thing that we're dealing with that we have no clue about, which is fascinating. It was always fascinating how little we understand about our nature, the nature of us, the nature of the creation, the nature of what's going on, and the fascinating things that go on, and how in the best part of science, how we are still learning and we can still find things out. This little story popped up, and it just caused my mind to... Uh, ex- kind of go off a little bit into the things I don't normally think about too much, but has potential. If you give it a little bit of thought, you might see that this things we don't know can really, the, of the way things are, and there might be conditions which we don't even have an idea about, may actually start to explain the wonders that we see, like how does the sun burn, or why is it like it does, and why does it have characteristics similar to a different element, and and what is this fantastically cool-looking things like superconductivity and magnetism and gravity we can't even really define, and all these things we just have a poor handle on, and our language is so poor in describing. Uh, but this little story popped up, and it got my my mind going a little bit. Room temperature superconductivity achieved for the first time. 
That's a lead headline. That always catches my attention. Superconductivity is a really interesting thing. It would allow us to transmit energy without loss. Superconductivity is a condition that allows energy transfer without loss, and it allows storage without loss. You have no heat in transfer, and you have no heat in transmission. And so this has a, been a, one of these things you, we've been looking at trying to do, but what the story caught me was the, com, the simple components that are evolved and the maybe not so simple condition. And this is where the hitch comes relative to actually having it happen in our lives and in, in the room is the condition. And yet the condition maybe points to something else, which we have trouble doing, but Mother Nature has no trouble at all. I just wanted to expose it, just kind of a fantasy, just a neat thing for me to think about. I hope you find some interest in some of this, because I think when you start finding out about the nature of things, you're, we're going to do a whole lot better than the, utilizing the fallen nature of uh, of man or the fallen nature of these minion demons that are out there that believe you are an animal and that you are somehow violative of the very nature that you come from and that you are a comorbidity to the environment and they are so divorced from reality that they don't realize they're a part of it too and will deny it by saying you need to go first I'll watch so we have some really con interesting conditions these people are out there folks and there's not something you can turn your head on they've been doing this for a long time most of the problems I could see relative to property rights, due process, and all these other things that we thought were ours that we'll give lip service to, we'll call it out, but we won't insist on it, actually, that have been taken from us, have been taken from us by someone stepping aside what it is and making it look like they're giving us something, when in fact we never held them to the fact that they didn't have the right to do that or that way. And so they've made it an unnatural world we wonder why the world's upside down. That's be, that's how we never we never cre created the cor maintain the correct orientation, and so everything we look at is sort of upside down and insane. It's because you're living in in an insane, insane and upside down world, figuratively, well, not so figuratively on the insane, and we haven't. It was up to us to stop that, at least for each one of ourselves. But room temperature semiconductor achieved for the first time. I've been watching this stuff since all my life, in batteries and technology and all the hopes and dreams. Remember, we had the Jetsons cars that were going to be flying by now. Well, we're kind of close because we have these lightweight electrical devices that fly now. That was that's even pretty cool. But nothing like superconductivity or these other these really interesting phenomenon. A team of physics. Physicists in New York have discovered a material that conducts electricity with perfect efficiency at room temperature. Perfect efficiency. The superconductor. Superconductivity. A long-sought scientific milestone. Well, they're going to—they're trying to get them higher. This temperature higher and higher, not just room temperature. They actually have to do the cryo, cryo they have to cool the, the the material to cryogenic temperatures normally. This used to be the old stuff that would allow this to be a condition. They then started mixing certain elements and finding out they could do certain things like like I told you, material science is an amazing thing. You, you'll you'll be able to do new technologies as you learn what the elements are that we as we perceive elements, how they're mixed together, how they can be, how they can be put together in order to do things for us. Nature already does this uh already for us in certain instances that we get to witness that. For instance, it doesn't take special super exotic, uh, what caught my mind here was the su non super exotic materials that are used. It's just stuff we find spewing out of hot springs and, uh, and anything else that uh, or volcanoes or whatever. Real simple stuff uh, that uh, the hydrogen, carbon, and sulfur compounds operates as a superconductor at 59 degrees Fahrenheit, the team reported in Nature. That's more than 50 degrees hotter than the previous temperature superconductivity record, record last year. And so I just want to jump down a little bit just to identify. Remember here, we're not, we're not dealing with anything sophisticated. It's simply hydrogen, which is abundant in the universe. And I want you to think about that as we move out uh, from the Earth and in the universe. We've got this whole thing going on. And carbon, which is, oh, it's our bane. In this kind of, Greta, ask Greta, she'll tell you it's the bane of the world. It's part of the process. It's part of nature. They deny all this to us. And it's sulfur. Even the mini, either the, 
The minor demons in the world recognize sulfur as a basic element. Simple thing, hi, things, hydrogen, carbon, and sulfur, and uh, this makes a semiconductor at 59 degrees, and uh, they, uh, the, uh, that's because the substances are superconducted at room temperature only while being crushed between a pair of diamonds uh, to pressures roughly 75% as extreme as those found in the Earth's core. And that was the second little clue that just got me thinking a lot. They have to put this material, this hydrogen, carbon, sulfur material that they make between, in the pressure between two diamonds that they, that raise the pressure upon that is 75% of the Earth's core. Now, I just want you to consider something. That means that we have 25 more percent pressure available. We also are going up in temperature, so this may be counter to what I'm thinking, but we certainly have access to hydrogen carbon and sulfur at 75% of the pressure of the Earth, 75% uh, to the pressure of the Earth's core. That it occurred to me that we don't know that nature doesn't have these, com these simple combinations of elements in its, its ingredient list and its mechanisms that we may be uh, clueless to. That we have a whole lot more pressure to put on something at a depth that's already in the Earth with the materials that sit there, simple materials we already know exist, that the thought occurs to me. And when you look at what they're doing, they have to make, they make this construction so that it has a lattice. This is critical because we move now to hydrogen, and when you get it compressed enough, you have, it becomes a metal, a gas that becomes a metal, and it forms a lattice. That lattice is almost, it's, I can't say it's identical in angles, but it's a lattice just like carbon, graphene. And so you have two elements that when you put them under pressure and in a certain condition make layers and structures. The graphene carbon structure of which is we understand, even though it's one layer, molecule layer, uh, one molecular layer thick, it's the strongest substance we know. You start putting all these ideas together and it looks like we, the physicists, the material scientists have found out that the Earth, even at 75%, has more dynamic, more energy, more types of dynamics to put on materials. That it occurs to me possibly happenstance even so, these materials are already existing in the Earth. If you move the idea that hydrogen can be a lattice and it responds energetically like carbon, and we look at the sun and we realize the pressures and extreme extremities on the sun, we, want, and we realize that that's glowing like, as I've told you, it looks like, to me, if you look, it looks like a glowing cinder of carbon. If we understand that a hydrogen lattice, hydro, metallic hydrogen lattice, will do the same emissivity, or similar, or very similar, then we can see a translation to some, vi and a construction, a natural construction, in the, in the creation of this place, that makes the very same conditions that the scientists did in a lab, naturally. That my thought went to the fact, and I don't have certainly the proof, that if the Earth has the materials and the Earth has the dynamic, even at 75%, it's got 25 more percent to go. We don't know what's in there to do, do all this, notwithstanding we're told it's made only of iron in the core. That maybe, just maybe, there's a dynamic and natural construction that actually puts these materials together to cause natural superconductivity in the conditions where they are by the nature of their construction. That it starts that superconductivity, wonder how do things continue energy, storage of energy or transmission of energy without loss, a superconductor can do that. That if there's some substances around the core somehow in the earth that are causing superconductivity, that's also inductive power as well. We start to discuss maybe how does the sun, who is the same type of a body, only much larger, superconducting and, uh, and, and interacting inductively with the earth. Well, how does this earth keep heating? It has to be coming from somewhere, the energy. It just doesn't make it up because of nuclear, response, nuclear d decay. We're looking at Van Allen belts that act as big conductors. Anybody who's ever seen inductive heaters, you know you stick an iron, something iron in the middle of some core, some conductive uh, wire, and you pulse it with a certain energy. You don't touch the metal. 
the iron core, the iron inside those inductive ba conductive bands induces heat energy and heats it up with do fiction. It seems to be a similar model as what we have on the earth that this little, I know they're not talking about this and I've kind of gone off and maybe you're not interested. This is the stuff that really does interest me. The earth may have this capacity to do it already naturally. Why it's such an anomaly in our mind? How does this thing work this way? How do we have transfers of energy that are not really losses? How do we have storage of energy? How do these things, how do we have cyclotrons in the, in space, above our atmosphere? How do they induce more energy and bring it in and protect us or block it or create this, the internal dynamic? Well, if you have what they call in high temperature, and we're going to have to go a little bit higher temperature to get there, but if you already have dynamics that are in the, in a, in a lab that the earth can exceed by 25 more percent, and that's estimates. We don't know the dynamics in there. It may very well be that nature has created, and we won't find yet for a while, and may find, and maybe never, there is superconductivity in the simple materials of the universe. And I guess my, my point on that is, is having those awarenesses, you start to realize nature's a lot more awesome uh, than Greta might condemn, than the evil demon see, uh, out there trying to show that you... A carbon-based unit, a hydrogen-based unit, a sulfur-based unit is somehow a sin against the nature itself. And I, I guess I'm partly looking at this, the awesome ignorance that we have about nature and these little, these little indicators here, how cool it could, be, these things could be wired together that we don't even have a clue yet, how it could be working all naturally this way, what's so hard for man to do. And we have a group of people on the earth who deny themselves that they are those same people that they can point the finger at everywhere else and say these basic elements are a bane to the very people themselves and the structure of the earth that they, they will condemn everything and everybody and rule over your life. And they work and they plan to subvert your whole system. Whether you agree it's government, state, or whatever, state is, whatever you words you want to say, there's systems that really are somewhat there to protect you. They've been perturbed. They've been thrown on their head. And we as a people, anybody, self-respecting people, should have said, that's a crime. We're going to stop it. Now, COVID was the first example of that. I thought was gen was so universal, this would give us the answer. I don't guess not many people see it that way. And so we're still kind of hanging in there. But anyway, I'm... This is pretty interesting. This is a, is there a, is, have we seen that relative to what they did in the lab, that the earth is even more powerful to do its things, the sun even more, more powerful than that, to move maybe the base from carbon to hydrogen, one of the very abundant elements as we understand elements in the, in the universe as we understand that. And that what we look at and what's denied by these people, and there is no sun, or it's a gas body, which is the most seemingly, it's been the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard in my life when I was even young. It still hasn't held up. But you get into superconductivity, and you get into store energy storage, and you get into interactions with these lattice structures, which we, our science tells us, allow for resonances. And now we start to get a better idea. This place is pretty... It's created pretty interesting, pretty cool. And there's things in it we have yet to learn, and there's a lot of things we had, if we wanted to really not hurt each other, we could actually focus on, and we could actually extract from nature to help us, like these scientists are doing with this material science. New materials, new ideas, new capacities. Instead of locking everybody down, keeping everybody from doing it, doing exactly the opposite of what they say is supposed to be done, and putting all this nonsense on you, which everybody complains about, but doesn't say, wait a minute, you didn't have that right. You just didn't have that right. And being intelligent enough to say how, not because you just didn't say you had the right, but giving, giving authority its due, given that we aren't so nice and we need to have, we need to have a referee. And I'm not talking about the cops here. We're talking about objective basis in, in law and respecting property and pe people. And like I say, the law brings the peace. In fact, there's, as I was looking through some studies here, and we, we utilized here recently, here just in a recent filing to come, the law is to work no injury. I twisted that around to show that the actions of the officials causing irreparable harm meant that they, just by definition, they are not following any law. 
And so my advocacy is to say we have to stop those that are causing these harms because there is no law. I don't care what you think. They're not, they don't care. They're there. They don't care. Even for those of you that are in the so-called non-aggression principle, they're not there. You have an invader. You have to deal with that. You're not going to stop it and be okay without, free of that imposition. And this is that stakeholder idea as well. This is explaining to you, you're not going to be free from these impositions. And they will push and they will push. And they're an opportunist and they're exploiters. And they're going to push until you have nothing more to give. And people are pretty resilient as a species, if I go there, as animals that you is. And they'll make more. And so there's an endless source of oppression uh, in the world to come. And again, the, the way this world, it's not even this United States of America, the way this world is wired is if you don't stop an oppressor, however wrong you think it's, he shouldn't be, but they still are, you're a slave. It's your slave to that oppression or you're directly a slave by having to put up with it. And so again, these are not my rules. These are just things I've seen for a, oh, a couple decades now with, I think, fairly good clarity. I think in ways I'm finding that even people with great intention and spirit have, don't think the way I think in order to address these oppressive oppressions. And I just am starting to liken it. We're in such a fallen state of awareness as a society everywhere and people we aren't even close to what those young guys early on in the United States, it's supposed to be the beacon of the best we had at the time. And I think in some parts, yes. They called the, you know, the Constitution of the United States, the states themselves, moving the power into the people instead of the, the king called the now government. Even the sovereign prerogative I'm trying to show you is not a power today as a king. And yet it's being wielded that way is our problem. In, in, in any rate. So, I, I kind of got off here. I thought this was just a, just a, I don't know where this story goes, but the fact that there, we have diamonds, we have carbon under high pressure diamonds under pressurized system pressing on some more other, other materials that allows it to be superconductive that isn't even, that's way less than the total capacity of the earth to produce and certainly less than the capacity of the sun, the dynamic energy, power, whatever, all this construction they can make, that it surely seems possible that these planets that we see and, and we see in the universe and the dynamic, the dynamic of the universe is to be efficient, create superconductivity. And once we do that, we don't have losses. And maybe these ideas and laws, and I'm not going to get too, I haven't thought about it too much more, they start to fall away from these so-called laws, these thermodynamic laws. They're not violating anything because there's no losses. And so we all of a sudden start to be able to, like I'm trying to ask you to do, free up your mind on a, more, being more fluid into what's available to us and use those things that maybe no one else sees in order to advance what you need. That's seemingly what I do when I get together with people and I offer all kinds of things that are go done and it, it, it's, it's almost beyond people to conceive, and then I find out where they might understand, and I try to go step by step, and I explain the support for all of it, the, the authorities for it all, and all of a sudden it finally, it finally just exposes itself. These ideas expose themselves, much like this has at least got my imagination. This is exposing that there's conditions in something as simple as the Earth, <laughs> as simple as we might make it, that has con dynamics in it that actually can create superconductivity. And wouldn't that be an interesting thing? It was also, that's what it was. I didn't have the link for it, but they were talking about the, there's a split, and we've been talking, we've, I've mentioned it, we've talked about the shifting poles of the earth and the split that's in the uh, North, Atl or the, in the Atlantic, and, and this, and, and the moving of it, and th this started to actually fill in some of that. If there's superconductivity and it's a, a pole of a magnet and moving around and it's uh, dynamic, we could actually see this pole magnet actually being generated, not because of the the iron, that ends up being the heater, with the inductive rings of the Van Allen belts and the sun beating on that. Where that energy comes from, I'm, I'm not quite sure. It could be just the construction of a superconductor we're seeing is called the sun. And it's radiant force and uh, inducted, induced into an iron core, but it's not really that either. There's other layers 
that are actually allowing for a free flow of energy that is completely unknown to us. And this is, and I, if I can then say, that's us as a society. We, there's things that were known before, like ancient civilizations, or the people that made the Constitution, that had knowledge of the world before, without the connection to the world, that knew this whole world better than we ever do right now. And so everything looks like magic to us. It looks like these people that have taken advantage of that. These are the new priests, if you will, of the green religion, no less. The new green deal is this whole thing. Is us allowing these priests to exist and impose their religion. Those of you that think you have a religious belief, those of you, even those that you don't, that's still a religious belief, in my estimation, no matter what you call it, whatever you believe in, whatever, even nothing is believing in nothing. You have a system of, of organization that you perceive the world about. That these people are coming to put their religion on you. And for those of you that do claim a Christian or Hindu or what or whatever, and all the all the different religious sects, I guess you could call the belief systems. What Muslim or is that Islam? Excuse me if I made that insult. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It, it's the, all these names, these isms that you put your you form your life from are being invaded by another type of religion that denies to itself this fan, amazing awesomeness that we see dynamics in a lab that are less than what happens in the natural dynamics of an earth system and even the solar system and then the universal the universe system uh, that the universe may be doing just because it's out there and you put in these these magical things called superconductivity and it's like it, what of our what are our laws are just uh, wow i don't even know what to say about it then on the other hand, you deny it, and guess what you get to do? If you deny all that and no one says, wait a minute, you're being, you're a lunatic, and I'm not talking about the moon, you are just doing something unnatural. We cannot tolerate that, because you are imposing an insanity that we don't need to live under. And that insanity is just another occupation on your life. In this case, it can be identified to a religion, a green religion. The new Green Deal is that very same thing. I don't care what name you put on it. They're going to be, as I'm noticing now that I quickly touched on it, I didn't even get deep into it. When I saw that it was all part of the same thing, I kind of moved on. But uh, I think with this new uh, Twitter that I uh, noticed I got, I didn't have time to go look at it. It, it looks like it's really uh, been this, uh, this endemic thing is really piling on to us. They're moving it. They'll be moving this thing from infectious, which they never had, to, to every ill ailment of man. And that is going to be conditioned to the interaction with the environment. And then it, I bring you back to what I said. You ever thought about why your health laws are actually in the environmental law section of the codes in, some, in lots of places? In Australia, they are. Why is, it, why is your health law environmental law? And so, anyway. Fascinating. Nature's fascinating. Blows me away. And uh, I didn't have uh, this. I had this a long time, and I'm not sure, Grimner, if you have have were interested in this or did. Maybe you knew about it, but I saw it when I was looking at this. When I started looking at science things, how much science did I want to talk about today? I uh, just wanted to mention this because it's important to see. Uh, I, th I hope it's still available. Feynman lectures on physics, the most popular physics books ever written, now completely online. And I don't know too much about Feynman. I know a little bit. I've never, in the last 20 years, I haven't focused on any of this type of stuff. It's just a, a it's just an ongoing interest for me. I've always want, I've wanted to be an oceanographer. Why well, I chose that because ocean, the ocean was inner space that wasn't studied at all at the time I was looking at it, and it incorporated all sorts of sciences. So that's there's a that's a little there's a little science guy inside me that never ever got out. But so I see this stuff and it interests me. Last fall, we let you know that Caltech and Feynman Lectures website joined forces to create the online edition of the Feynman Lectures on Physics. They started with Volume 2, uh, followed up with Volume two, uh, volume 1 and Volume 2 and Volume 3, making a collection complete. I'll give you a link. You can, get, if you're interested, I always, these guys, this guy was pretty interesting. Some of the stuff I'm not so sure I agree. Like I see the Twitters come through and I, I wouldn't agree with some of the Twitters I see that are a statements he'd made, but he's a pretty interesting guy no, nonetheless. 
anyway, I offer this to maybe if you're interested to uh, get his works and see what's going on. Maybe I, I do believe that in the things I have seen from him, he's one of those guys that I would have thought was a good teacher. He would, I, and I've never had him as a teacher. I'm just saying through this this distant looking thing that we do. He would, uh, I've had a couple of really excellent teachers, and I think he would have been one of them, uh, even though I don't know that. And so there, there you go for if you want to get into the science stuff, have a start of reopening your mind, start to lock, kick, kick out all the all the structure, start to freely think again, and get what we need back to us and. Really, just the science is really just trying to understand the way this place is wired itself, and so we have a better utility of it. And what they've done is that they've decided that they've they know better for us. These uh, demon minions have decided that the, the 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 nature itself is actually that they're trying to protect is the harm, and you are one of the byproducts of it, which is the most harmful. But you are a comorbidity. As we watch this, you know, the CDC mentioning, well, it wasn't COVID; it was comorbidities. They're focusing in on that. Pretty soon, you're going to be tracked in traits for just having illness, period. Forget that, that it's infectious because that illness is going to be deemed to be a cause from or affect the global environment of which these lunatics, and I don't mean the moon, are professing their religion. And they're the keepers somehow of that. Moving into this fraud, CD, and how it's all inverted almost always, and how partly that is what you can use to out it, but you have to come from the objective basis. You don't give lip service and, and, a, and summary to what you think you know. You have to develop it. So you say your fundamental rights are violated. That's not enough. You have to go explain what those rights are before you really have the standing. And then you have to provide the evidence that what you said was, viola was violated, infringed, was in fact infringed. That's your harm. That creates your standing, and but generally, and so we look for the anomalies of harm, anomalies of of improper administration to cause that cause harm, or a bad set of advice that caused harm. That the one that's giving it had to do better, and the way you do that is because they've been given prerogative power. You have to show they did better because they had the awesome duty that they're wielding. They had to do better. You put an obligation on them to do, having to do better. And so this is proper disclosure is not actually a judicial thing. Administrative proper disclosure is actually an administrative breach. So, so this is what I, I keep on focusing on some of these reports are out of the, their testimony, out of their the mouth of the, of the exploiters against you. It's laid out for us if we would just listen for it. And this ends up becoming one little line item, something in a so-called complaint that you would make. And I don't mean just to complain. I mean you are going to cause people that are in the places causing you harm to have to do something. And there's remedies for that to happen. The CDC report shows that COVID-infected people, 71% had always worn masks. Now, on all these stories, I've got to continue to tell you, I have a problem. Whenever you mention covid and you don't. You didn't hear COVID nineteen there, did you? No. See, this is. A, I have a problem with all this COVID stuff. I'm going to tell you until I see science, until I see the superconductivity material, COVID doesn't exist. And especially when the the people who are supposed to tell you said that they don't even know how to identify the darn thing. This doesn't even exist. However, we can use it anyway. 71% had always worn their masks. The study compared 154 case patients who had positive tests to 160 asymptomatic patients who tested negative. Well, what's the test? There is no test. And the test they use is inaccurate. It's, 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 it has no basic standard. It has no particular isolate that they can utilize. It's not in a research function. The sample from which they assume by some measure is pure to what they're they're searching for. No, no, this, they go to the garbage bin where everybody's been eating lunch and try to find out who had macaroni and cheese and the asymptomatic problem. There is no test, but this talks about a test in case patients. We're finding out the, 
you are told, and if you were just go read the basics and the rules, your, the word case is defined. So we use that. The word case is defined not as the results of a PCR test, not as the result of any test, even if they find one. It's a thing that's defined. It's a whole lot of other things as well. And so case patients, we're finding they're basing it on a test, and there's really nothing more behind it. It's not a case. And so there's a fraud going on here. I tell you, you can, I cannot read these things that, with any reality, but we can use it nonetheless to identify things that we can use. And this is how I tell you, you take them as notice, you use them as such through the, the mechanisms that you need. Last week, this Arthur noted the mask mandates were not working, like, likely because people failed to use and maintain them properly. Now, this guy wants, or this woman, I guess, maybe Leslie, could be a man too, right? Neutral names. Now, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, has, CDC, has just published a report about the study that showed about almost 71% of the infected case patients always wore masks. Okay, I'm having trouble getting past this because none of this exists objectively by a certified statement from any local official to you, any one of you, that any of this works. And remember, they've talked in the title of COVID. They get down to the study and the discussion, and it's now COVID-19. Be specific on these definitions. COVID is the coronavirus family, of which there's many coronavirus, and they mutate. COVID-19 has never had a cause certified to. And I'm Mark on the Beast at ProtonMail.com. Send me the certification from anywhere in the world. I told you this back, I don't know, January, February, whatever it was, I finally confirmed myself when I found out the, de the discussion of the serology t test, which is supposed to be the blood test. They admit, the CDC admitted there was no test. And you heard me put that hashtag out. I don't know, I may have been the first one to do so, and I have not relinquished that ground, and I will not. Now I'm almost, I mean, talk about convicted. You're going to have to draw and quarter me and spread me around the city to keep me from denying this. I'm not the denier. Denying that this is science, denying that there's an existence of anything. But uh, again, I could read, but the point was you get lost in the numbers, you think something's going on, and you know, what you take away is, if you always wear your mask, you could still get this thing. But see, we knew that behind the woodshed. All you listeners did too. How? Well, when I talk to you about the mask, the 3M company that makes these surgical masks, if you go roll scroll down, you got to go down in through the document that they give, and it says, warning, this respirator helps protect against certain particulate contaminants, but does not eliminate exposure to or the risk of contracting any disease or infection. Before use, the wearer must read and understand the user instructions provided as part of the packet product packaging. Follow all local regulations. In the U.S., a written respiratory protection program must be implemented, meeting all requirements for OSHA, OSHA, 1910.134, including training, fit testing, and medical evaluation. In Canada, see, you're not out of it, Kanukistan. This is a comprehensive discussion from 3M, the company that makes these masks. CSA standard Z, is I got that right for the Kanukistanians? Z, 94.0. Four requirements must be met and or requirements of the applicable jurisdiction as appropriate. Miss you. This is in bold now, folks. Don't listen. Stop what you're doing and listen. This is in bold. Misuse may result in sickness or death. Okay, enough. I mean, we were told, I read this months ago. We didn't need to have someone who was following at the lead of the CDC. One time thing is right, one it's wrong. The who, oh no, lockdowns are good, lockdowns are bad. No, no. You just go look at what they're doing. 74%, when I see this, that everything's supposed to be done correctly, how did the 26% escape? Given the mask does not protect. Given the mask could kill you, could cause a comorbidity they blame on COVID. And did you get the OSHA, O-S-H-A, is that you are someone's employee whom they are responsible to 
these regulations as well. That the user instructions has to do with your slave relationship to an employer. So they protect their slave, their human slaves, the human workers. Okay, that's not in this pamphlet, but I mean, when you get down to figure out what this is all about, this is what this is all about. Did you get any uh, instructions, folks? So when you're putting these masks on, you are out of compliance with the warning. So does this report before even make any sense? No, it makes no sense at all. Even if I don't, agree, even if I agreed there's a virus out there that they can identify, you notice they don't talk about it. Remember that last story did not talk about when I read, did not talk about what it is that they're they're protecting. It doesn't matter because it's the company that makes this mask, and I don't know, I haven't read the rest of them, it doesn't matter. We know you, you're not going to stop a killer beehive attack with a chain link fence. It just does not going to work. So we have the the manufacturer tells us it won't work. The CDC says 74%. I'm saying the 26% may be a lie from the CDC. How the heck did you have a control group that didn't produce negatives, and what was your test that you did to do that? How would you know that since it's so inaccurate? And it's not actually applicable to what they're doing. So I don't know. I can't even read this. I told you anybody who mentions COVID or COVID-19 doesn't not. They're either promoting something or they don't know what they're talking about. And you hear right in that story the lady or guy, whoever that is, bouncing back and forth, waiting on, on with bated breath, you know, the mackerel, holy mackerel, bated breath about whether or not they're going to be working or not from the CDC. Whole life is focused in on this appropriate medical expert that's doing nothing but committing crime against everybody. And I've been asking you to identify this the, through these way, these things, to be able to protect yourself. So, so as CDC shows 71%, that's a lie because the, the mask couldn't be the, the stopper. It should have been 100%. But it doesn't exist, so they make it up, right? So the, their whole thing is no good. But anyway, even CDC now admits no gold standard of a COVID-19 virus isolate. Another story coming through. Some other buddy who's been on the uh, waiting for bait on bated breath who has a skeptical mind. He's a denier. Couldn't believe all this was right, but now he had to wait for the damning documents, he says, that confirms the Principia of Scientific International claims that has there has never been a successful laboratory test to isolate and confirm the existence of the SARS-CoV-2 virus alleged to have caused the COVID-19 pandemic. It's another wrong term, but at any rate, he's, a, he's showing you in negative that it doesn't apply. Uh, no, in effect, the science tells us there is no virus. How long ago did you hear it behind a woodshed? And what I said is, you just don't, oh, because I'm now cheeky about how much I know. I told you, you take that and you go attack those people that have forced you to be locked down, quarantine, whatever name you want to call it, not enjoying the fundamental liberties that the established government was to secure to you in black and white writing that can be your title and right when they didn't follow it. So we're still to the point in this guy, he's, oh, look at I was right. I said you were right to go before they told you you were right, and you were obligated, if you wanted to be anybody, responsible to yourself, to do so. And I offered the habeas. I offered the way, the, one of the options. And so no, nobody so far that I know has actually taken that. And here's another thing as I watch. You know, I told you that was kind of, I was hoping to kind of, you start flexing your muscle and creating those things that in the future you're going to probably need have and have to have a knowledge about you have to have almost one stick sitting in your in your hip pocket when they try to come and do things to you based on some uh, edict of some emperor that wears no clothes well that you're not following through with what i'm saying you're not in the practice to raise your capacity your response your knowledge your interactive power with these criminals that are going are coming or going to come or continue to be there to interfere even where you have to go outside and where you don't wear a mask, you have to look at the sneers of someone else that never did that before. That's a violation as well. Doesn't seem like much, but now you're not free to associate. And that was supposed to be secured to you through these officials when they acted. So here we have another, oh, wow, and we have no virus. Well, he refers to John Rappaport. And so it took all this time, John reporting, in order for him to be to be able to print on his website that, well, there's no isolate. Well, folks, in March, 
the the document that was printed by the CD the excuse me the diagnostic panel the FDA agreed to on the emergency test so called it's a research technique not a test it's misrepresented as a test it said in the March paper on page I thought it I think it's 38 if memory serves because it changes right in, in later when they make the second revision it goes to page 39 I think the order is that page 38 explains in March. And this was something that was already printed in March that there was no isolate in March. This was not even a question. I thank, again, John Rappaport for making these ongoing reports, but knowing a thing is not stopping that thing that's wrong. Knowing a thing is doing nothing. It just sits there with all this stuff in your mind. Okay, you, you know all this stuff. What are you going to do about it? It just fills up your mind. What is it doing? Not a whole lot, especially now when you're all locked down. So we have, again, John Rappaport, a valuable service, but not moving beyond that with the knowledge to do something with it. That I was telling you at the time, and I, by then I was convic convicted in this point, there is no test. It was a hashtag. There is no test. If there is no test, every order you're watching is a crime against you and everyone else. Move now. Move in March. Don't wait till now. Not <laughs> in October, to be confirmed that I was a website that told you so in July. See, it's still a failure. And so moving through, we continue and we see things going on and more of the promotion. And this one was kind of interesting because where that lawsuit in Tennessee was filed, I don't think it was a week later, uh, dark humor here, an official these people are so criminal that they'll do anything to deny there's nothing to be afraid of. That an official dies right a week within a week of the filing of the Tennessee paper in Tennessee. But I noticed something about the story. And rest in peace, Mr. Mr. Lonnie Norman. Uh, no, nothing against you. It has to do with the condition. You look like a fine, fine gentleman. The mayor of Manchester died early Monday morning after being diagnosed with COVID-19, city officials said. Let me go to the title. Manchester Mayor Nor Lor Lonnie Norman dies from COVID-19. Folks, can you tell me which one? Did you catch which the problem here? Have I proved again you, can't even, you cannot listen to anything that's stated around anything with COVID? That's just the common cold anyway. Even if it's even if it's started by uh, known to be like a SARS derivative, it's still going to be a coronavirus. It still has a long way to go, even if it's identified to be anything. It's got four or five steps to go before we have to be concerned with it, or whether the officials can certify to be concerned with it as a function of invoking the jurisdiction and authority they're claiming right now. They're not even close. But did you catch it? The title says Manchester Mayor Lonnie Norman dies from. COVID-19. The opening sentence says the mayor of Manchester died early Monday morning after being diagnosed with COVID-19. Is the fraud against you all? They cannot. That title in this Columbia Daily Herald needs to be whipped about the head and shoulders with a wet noodle real hard. They cannot make that title unless they are holding a secret of the universe right now that they have the test to know that COVID-19 could do anything, being its only symptoms. I already know that can't do anything, but let's give them a little bit of credit. They found the virus. They found the test of the mad scientists in the cave. They're withholding the secret from you all. If they can stand there to say that it was you, he died from the cause of the symptoms called COVID. But then they clarify that in the story. This is the same thing for those of you that are legalisms, the legal eagles, the people that read law. You'll know, and you know this if you've done any kind of reading, the titles mean nothing. It's the text. You see that model right here. We can't read the title because it doesn't really mean the truth. When you read the, you read the second one, I guess you could call it was with COVID-19 because people die. They die with COVID. They die with flu-like symptoms. They die with fever, they die with infection, they die with respiratory problems. I understand we're all going to probably die. The probability of us dying with respiratory problems are, as we get older, really high. So we die with what they're calling these comorbidities. We die with something else, with from something else. 
And so, right here in this story, again, no slight to the Honorable Mayor, but, you know, just dark humor. It just seemed kind of interesting how w within within a week, the people are dying to prove that there's something there we're dying from, and yet that's the title, but that's not the fact. And so we have more and more how, not that we need for the media, about the media notice, but we can prove that not even the notice you're giving in the media is understandable. And no one makes a clarification. This is another point. No one's denouncing the errors. You're not like seeing them, oh, we made an error, we now have to say with. We said from, we made an error, we corrected to change that it's with, and then, then they usually make a discussion. Well, we couldn't even say with, could we? Unless they admitted, yeah, he was with flu-like symptoms. And he was an older gentleman, I suppose. I mean, older than 40, older than 50. He was in the, he was in the group that has potential problems. So, I don't know if he wore a mask or not. don't know if he became the class that was going to get the infection because it was a false sense of security. Understand that problem. This is what the CDC is saying in so many words. 74% of those people thought the mask was going to help them, and it did not. And I could have told them that. Just 3M told me that, and I told you that. There is no test. CDC told me that. I told you that. How they test for that mask thing, I don't know, but how they expect that it would be more, not 100%, is a 25% failure of the transmission, isn't it? Which they still haven't defined, which is required that they find. And don't forget the all-important susceptibility. Not the way the rules define it, the actual receptivity of the whatever this infectious agent is. That hasn't been found. You have such a list right there, a bullet point list, to place before an official who failed to do that, do the duty under the, an obligation of the one statute that imposed it upon him as an executive function, violating, because the failure of violating the separation of powers of the legislature demanding that, that it gets done in its duty to protect you, to secure to you these very fundamental things. I just said a whole bunch here that would be short, short work in a, in a habeas. Now we get to this. Michigan attorney, burn your masks. Now the COVID emergency orders have been struck down. He didn't even say COVID-19 either. But this is that Michigan report I, the Michigan uh, report I told you about the court case I read the conclusion of. I showed you the fault within it. The Michigan the Supreme Court unanimously struck down Governor Gretchen Whitmer's COVID-19 executive order lockdown order striking a blow to the rule, the blow for the rule of law over the whims of a power-hungry Democratic governor. Okay, a lot of politics there. Even the rule of law is a politics. It wasn't a blow for the rule of law. I told you and showed you, you were seeing a district court who had standing as an entity to ad address the Supreme Court directly, something you don't normally get to do, and certify to them from the Supreme Court, a question directly from them, the Supreme Court, as to a certain two questions. The underlying acceptance of which was that COVID exists and COVID pandemic exists. And we received that in the conclusion that said, and then in the dissenting, partly agreeing dissenting opinion, that said that COVID was a pandemic, was a serious problem. No, it's not. It doesn't exist. There is no test. And so you watched, well, yes, burn your mask. You better burn your mask because they're not helping you at all. Where was this guy back in March? This is not a blow for the rule of law. This is a condemnation of the rule of law, as I've explained it. And this is what you have up the Notice to you how you're, you're, none of you may do this, but hopefully some of you are, what you have to address. And I can tell you that there's at least one guy in the world that just did. And we're, we're still waiting to see how this is going to work through. This has nothing to do with Democratic governors, because in the state that I was talking about, it's a Republican governor. This was across the board. Both political parties have the, are the different wor wings of the same bird of prey that are going to implement, whether they call it the Green New Deal or allow the sustain of the adjunct policy condition to be in your life that strips you of all your rights to exist. Each one of these parties are doing that to you. Again, once you see how this place worked out, you'll realize how that is. That's really the 
That's where the battle is, not this political nonsense I see going on, in particular, like, through the Twitter and stuff. I can't even, I can't even keep up. It's just so much time is spent on, in my mind, useless things that all that time spent writing all the things I see and in social networks and complaining and wherever could be used in time to write a concise statement and start, at least even start, if you didn't want to jump into your habeas, at least start to make that record. And some of you that done, have had done, uh, you've seen that they come back with zero. They come back with nothing, because there's nothing there. The governor does not possess the authority to exercise emergency powers under the Emergency Powers of the Governor Act of 1945, because that act is in an unlawful delegation of legislative power to the executive branch in violation of the Michigan Constitution, the court said at 7 uh, to 0 opinion October the 2nd. Well, that's not a supply, that's not a, a below four rule of law. That's a 1945 law that shouldn't have existed in 1945. That she came in and she beat people up with to today in 2020 is not a blow for the rule of law, which shows you it's just a brand, it's a cover up. And what do they do? They imply that COVID-19 was something in that order. And it's, it can't not, it cannot be. That state, no state has certified to the existence of the cause. And I'm going to say it that way because I don't know what's, there might be, I told you, there might be something out there. It may be a little different than the common uh, cold. It may be different than the uh, seasonal flu. It may be something novel. But that's not to be done on presumption. And, and more importantly, as I was reading the original documents from China, the reports from China, it was an implication that they presumed its existence at all and that it might be causing this problem. I won't even deny there might be something. I'm saying that no one ever certified that it was, and the law, the black and white, required that. And when they didn't do that, they did not obtain jurisdiction or authority to do any of it. It has nothing to do with whether or not that emergency powers did a breach under the separation of powers doctrine. You notice that question is not, you don't even talk about the, the idea of the public health crisis being a fraud here. They changed they finally got to the point when the, the to say the 1995 law should have never been. Oh yeah, she got away with it a little bit, and, and we shut it down. But COVID's important, and COVID is dangerous, and so you're left with that in a legal proceeding. Fascinating, because you didn't you didn't have the attorneys, and certainly the district court wouldn't present the proper what I consider at least. But you, again, mark on the beach, protonmail.com. If you have another view on how this thing works out on the through the law. Burn your masks. Like, burn your bras, it seemed like to me as I see this. You should have, well, where was this guy back in March? We heard the 3M said, don't use them. They're going to cause nothing but problems anyway. So even if there was a, there was a, a thing, uh, they weren't effective anyway. But the burn your bras, folks, the face bras. And so we're, we're free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty we're free at last. And we're not, but that's what everyone thinks. Uh, because everyone thinks, I told you, the, the door gets closed, and now they just got as far as they got. And, and all we see now is that, that they can't use that emergency order. It doesn't stop them from bringing back the fact that they never certified, and they still acted without jurisdiction and authority. Lock, uh, litigating uh, over lockdowns. I'm bringing this forward for examples of throughout the world, that when you bring a judicial remedy, notwithstanding uh, maybe our ideas of the corruption, my view is if you bring it nice and the narrow path, nice, concise, as best you can, you're likely going to put the pressure on them because the nice, clear statement is very hard to obfuscate, notwithstanding all the tools and the technique and the experience and talent they have to obfuscate the point. You, It's very hard to do it when you only have one or two things you want to advance. As I told you guys about the example I told you about the lawsuit in Tennessee, that's a model. Those of you who do habeas should be able to focus on the first eight pages, and from that, that is then model, that is then used for your facts and your uh, your names and things like that. It may be shorter. It all depends on what you want to bring forward. But that's an example, a start a beginning example on to to, to start and focus on a narrow one issue th problem where you it's clearly able to delineate whether they did or they didn't. And it's by evidence. It has nothing to do with your opinion of it. It's really how you, right now we're in that time when we're, we're, that's about all we have left. And what that actually speaks to is the failure that they, that those provisions by the legislature were due process 
and they failed that. So that's how I've told you about the only thing you have to get at them is that they failed due process when, when, and you have to show that what fundamental rights you're talking about. And I said to make those real clear, just go to the Constitution. Don't try to make them up. Go to the Constitution and pull them from there first. You only need a, you only need one, but if you have a couple, and don't make it over overly complicated for yourself. So there are other cases in the world, and they want to say it's the it's it's a victory for the rule of law. No, it's not. The rule of law did not step up for all this time. They did not step off in Michigan since 1945 to stop something that the governor never never had the right to. So this is not what they're telling you either, and it's not the the where the if you will the fight. It's not where your point needs to be, and it doesn't need to be so complicated. But in other places, uh, it's we're reading on in this discussion here, litigation really around the world. According to Brussels Times, around 240 Belgians, mostly from the business community, are suing Bill Gates, the Belgian government, and the British epidemiologist and Dr. Neil Ferguson over their existing COVID-19 lockdown measures. For context. AIER, which is the organization website I'm reading this from, has covered how Bill Gates maintains a strong involvement with groups like the World Health Organization and is an avid supporter of public health projects involving men like Dr. Anthony Don't Fall Prey to Fauci and Dr. Ferguson. Barry Brownstein sums up Dr. Ferguson's connection to Gates as well as his relationship to the Belgian lockdown measures he is currently being sued for when he writes, quote, Neil Ferguson of the Imperial College London inordinate in, had inordinate influence advising, quote, advising national governments on pathogenic outbreak, outbreaks, close quote. Ferguson listens to Gates as his center receives, quote, tens of millions of dollars in annual funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I don't want to read on here. If you go down through, you see South Africa or Africa has suits. You see that the Dutch are advancing suits. You see that their people are advancing this and they're winning. They are winning, though, without challenging the non-existence of the COVID or the war to the point, the local certification of its existence at all. And when you know there's no test, and then they're going to have to also, you say that, they're also going to have to find the test. Maybe they'll have to go to these other people that had the test, that they're holding it out, because I don't know. Again, I don't, it's secrets around the world, I suppose, but somebody has the test if they can identify the cause. Why aren't we hearing about it? And so this, uh, this for those of you that are on the on the fence or not knowing quite a, how to move along or hesitant because you think it's unfamiliar and you don't want to go protect yourself by utilizing this unfamiliar thing, which should be very familiar to us, our own courts, which they, the courts will tell you, notwithstanding their corruption, that they're there to receive you if you want to do it correctly. And at that point, I need to interject. I've noticed quite a few people who who don't know how that even begins. So we have a little bit to learn. But anyway, not to interject that too much. Once you just go step by step and process the problem before you, step by step by the rules, the black and white before you, you don't have to know them. You just follow the instructions. You can move this thing for, through fairly well. And when you're on a narrow path of truth, and there's not much that can get in the way. The answer, the question is, did you fulfill the statute or not? Did you identify the requirement to identify the, where, where's the evidence? If, and you have a letter before that. You didn't provide the evidence when we asked, so we're suing to to stop you bef- until you get the evidence is really the case. And that's really a pretty simple case to bring forward. I'm quarantined without a certification to an infectious agent. That's a pretty bold statement, even though it doesn't sound like much. There is no test. They haven't offered any test. There's no evidence. They haven't offered any evidence. I've asked. Here's the letter. And so far, they have not ju- no jurisdiction to hold me in quarantine, let alone any authority that follows. Okay, so this is not that hard. That's a really simple discussion I just gave you. That would be, in my mind, if you would be sufficient to even start the a habeas process to get your muscles, your defense muscles in, in these remedies for redress, working up, you get them fired up a bit. I know people don't like to do this and it's unfamiliar, but I'm I'm telling you, it's not getting better. If you don't have this muscle being flexed a bit and getting the record out that you're not going to be messed with, the porcupine thing I'm trying to help get everyone, people to be looking like, it's not looking good here coming into the future. This was an example for you all. The cases coming in are being, are, are winning for people. 
may not be what I would like to see with the denunciation of the issue, of the purported cause, but the, the courts are coming back with victories for people when they're presented. So here's a list of cases you could, I'm sure, go out on the Internet and find if you didn't understand what, really how to start. Read enough to start getting familiar. In fact, I've been talking to a few people. That's all this problem is. You're not familiar enough with this language that the occupier has, and it doesn't take more than just to see enough of it. There's always going to be more to learn, but once you see enough, once you, I've given you the words that you can put together, to even if you're denied, you at least have that, they know you're, you're not going to take it no more. You're one voice saying, enough is enough for me. And if you're a little bit wrong, they'll, and you know what to look for, they explain what you might have missing, and if you haven't insulted a condition, if you don't bring a frivolous position, you have full right to bring it again. Corrected. In fact, if you did it wrong the first time, you could, and they say they might going to move out on you, uh, d dismiss it. You can ask for a, to the right of, of, of amending. You can fix that in your first case. It just takes an interaction. It's a very s formalized negotiation process. In this case, I'm saying there really isn't a right to a negotiation, and the fact that I'm forced to a negotiation is the harm, because these people didn't do what the law required to identify an infectious agent, even where the infectious agent is assumed and presumed and allowed by these courts. The people are winning, I guess, as I want to bring up. I told you, this is one of those things, it is so outlandish, you are on the right side of history here. You say, oh, what about the first cases? Well, that was the learning process of how the, the courts, the rule of law, was not going to help you. And it was going to take a little bit more. Now the now the arguments are refined. Even those that you now you see, even those that are accepting of this uh, non-existent thing, presumption and implication. I can't even believe this. The laws are allowing that. There, there. Now you have a, a a better lit road to follow with other cases. And uh, what was interesting in the Tennessee case, out of a fact affidavit of harm, uh, it was exposed, and we then used that the, as I told you before, in the Washington case, when the judiciary closed down and put any anything, any condition on accessing to the courts, it was a fundamental violation right there. And then they did it on something, and I think I said this before I came to the conviction that there was no test that they could certify to. This is right before that. This is way early on. I said, they've shut, you don't even have a government now. They've shut down one of the branches of your re redress. If you don't have redress, you don't have no law. You have no law, none of those people mean anything. And so you have a serious constitutional problem right there. But it was the point is that the judiciary accepted the executive's implicate implications and presumptions. And that's not supposed to happen at all anyway. And so the an affidavit came out that there was an order that for it said you had to wear masks in a at the courthouse or the county building. And that's a two part problem. If you understand the way that you want to talk about that you know about constitution and constitutional rights and things like that, the judge only has authority over the his courtroom or his his jurisdiction over the courts, not necessarily a whole county building, let alone agreeing without question to m enforce rules, mitigations that the executive never certified to. And that judge never double checked that is a breach of his duty, or her duty, whoever signed that. So when you under, really understand this place, you see exactly how they're destroying a lot of this, right in front of our eyes. Everyone thinks authorita, oh, they've got the authorita. Well, we're talking, they don't got authorita even. They don't have jurisdiction. And then when they made, they allowed, adopted, implications, you're watching your whole government is just not what it is. And I'm saying, then what do you think you're going to get out of that, that you've continued to allow? And none of you step up to even start exploiting that simple little fact. It's actually, that's what I get dismayed at. And so we were able to take that little fact statement and we exposed the, and it worked out integrated very well with the sustainable development promotion of the Bar Association members. Why would a judge do that? Well, here's here's a plausible reason why. They're actually promoting this global overthrow through their own documents, not our opinion. And that's a breach. That was a separation of powers problem and a breach. 
uh, to the duty and trust and all that stuff starts to fall into your hands and you're uh, becoming a, a pile of logs you get to throw on the pyre you're making for them if you just would step up, if you would just do this for yourself. Across the world, we're getting success. Again, not 100%, but it, it mean, the odds are here the condition is such that it's rolling in the in the direction of people. Whether you want to go to the extent I'm saying or even adopt some of these things that are going along uh, and agreeing with even the condition. So, and they're all supposedly unconstitutional. How is it South Africa, where the, the beacon of, the, of, of freedom and justice is supposed to be the United States and every other country out there is actually showing their judiciaries are acknowledging unconstitutionality. The United States can't really pull that together universally. Why is that? Is what our problem is. It's us. Not just our system, because that rule of law branded system is is making these decisions. And so that's the that's the interesting power we have to vi visit that jurisdiction. And you've heard me do this. I've actually kind of been even more amazed as I think about it. You've heard me. I'm not I'm not in Australia yet. The other other broadcast a month or so ago, I'm talking about health law in, in Australia. I'm referring to health law in other states. I'm referring in the conditions in Kanukistan. I have no clue what these the specifics of any place I'm talking about. And yet you see they're universally applicable is because of this usurpation of the Bar Association. It became, instead of the, like the states of the United States being different, it becomes one of the threads of, inter, of being integral, modeled, each modeled after each other, but for specifics within each jurisdiction that I can move with this generalized knowledge, and partly it's really just equity knowledge, and like we're doing in the one state chancery court. It, those principles are universal. And so that is another type of way to approach this. And when I start talking, that's what it makes it a little lot easier. So this is, I guess we're back to, the, this is on us. It, yes, it's unfamiliar, but really it's not that difficult, and there are successes. If for those of you that Want to follow a bit of a herd starting? You want to get out the you want to get out of the out of the, uh, the theater a little quick. There are court cases around the world to guide you. So I wanted to offer those to you all, and I want to remind you now. Back this came through, and I want it was just, the bird uh, the birds fly. You know the pigs fly flew. This is all again a regurgitation of something that happened before. They prime you, they set you up, they get what they get, they move on. A few years later, they bring it back. We're in the era of endless emerging diseases until you stop it, right? This is, there's not going to stop just because you you know it and you realize that it's just a scam. Why the who faked a pandemic written way back sometime? We had to get this off of the archive.org website, Wayback Machine. Uh, this is a discussion relative to the who faking a pandemic, what the a reporter found during the pig's fly flu, and I wanted to remind you, this is a model. This shows repetition. You can use this information, given you would read this and go research the facts of it, put them in your own facts and show these organizations are not doing health matters. They're not involved in that at all. And what I found interesting this article must be in, I can't remember, 2010 or 2014. I don't see the date now. Was, um, yeah, 2010. It's uh, February. <laughs> Interesting. Starts out in February here, right? Why the who faked the pandemic? The World Health, Health Organization has suddenly gone from, from crying, the sky is falling like a cackling chicken little to squealing like a stuck pig. The reasons are charges, charges the agency deliberately fomented swine flu hysteria. Quote, the world is going through a real pandemic. The description of it as a fake is wrong and irresponsible. Close quote, the agency claims on a website. I won't read any more. I want you to see this is an ongoing repetition of a model plan that they keep throwing out. I told you then, pigs fly flu in 2009, I think it was. What I found fa fascinating and gave me a chuckle in the petition in Tennessee, we actually used the sky is falling as an example. And what I s uh, remember, that was the example where th if the governor claimed the sky was falling, 
the local health official was required to go outside and look and certify that it was before it issued the ACME, the sky is falling umbrella. It's actually a passage in the Tennessee lawsuit to some per, some nature, paraphrased, that they referred to the sky as falling is a continuing theme, which I just kind of laughed a bit, chuckled just a little bit. The point being, the very serious point, that the who is faking pandemics. And I told you this, this is no different than what I was pointing out, the pigs fly flu, that this would be something if when pigs fly, is what I told you long time ago, is the same thing we're seeing with the COVID. But now even more so, you see, we're learning, I'm learning even more. Then I just had the knowledge it was no good. Now I know how to identify that it's no good and how to get those that agreed that the sky was falling without going out and checking and then harming you. So I just want to point out, we all learn as we move, but are we learning in a focused attack to focus in? We didn't have it in, I didn't have what the knowledge I had for the pig's fly flu. I certainly have it for for the pig's fly flu 2.0, which I told you, and I called it, I think now it struck me about January. So we can give it any name. It's still a, it's still a, a fake. It, it's done by supposed and in, in one state defined in rule as an appropriate medical authority. And then we have by their own statements, nothing they do is actually medical or anything else. It isn't even environment. You can say climate change is not about the weather. COVID's not about the medical. The uh, pigs fly flu wasn't about a pandemic either. The, these are big, just exploitive, organized criminal syndicates that we can we cannot necessarily stop on our own outside uh, out there but we can turn to local which i say you know and again thank you william robertson rest in peace uh, you were there too we were t- there talking about it together you see what's going on lo- global you see what they want to push it as a global but your power is going to be local is this thing called covid it's no different no different and so Again, as I think about how we were been doing this and repeating, I said hindsight 2020. There's nothing new here at all. Not just that it's not a new in the sun. The specifics are coming down, and, and I just found it fascinating. This came back around to tell people this. Someone wrote about the who faked a pandemic. It's no different than uh, than this. But now we have all these other players. We can literally know how to out them if we would just do that. Operation Warp Speed is using CIA linked contractor to keep. COVID-19 vaccine contract secret. I told you early on, I think it was around March, I said, remember, be careful. When the military was involved in the pictures, they said, helping take the tests and all. I said, that is a notice to you that the military is involved. I said, this is a military operation. I said, you're going to watch this be a theme. Part of vaccinations and relative to the military, and you understand, if you listen to me long enough, I'll tell you we're under, if you will, a hidden the spaghetti western false front, but a military occupation, which can go back, uh, one of them can go back to link the time of Lincoln and the overthrow of this place. Uh, at any rate, the administrative districts that were created are really military districts. I said, when the military comes in, watch out, that's just them showing a face and put a happy face on, on things, but that's what's really going on. Now we have many, many months go, and Whitney Webb, to her credit, uh, and maybe here to the uh, last American vagabond, make a report and show secret behind-the-scenes connections, not just to the military, but the CIA, linked contractors. So we have this, you know, you can call it deep state. This is a function inside the government, a corruption beyond imagination, I'm sure. I want to point out to you, you're not dealing with COVID. You're dealing with something on the move, all organized, all moneyed up. Everything's going to happen, and, when you, and this is a war. I guess is the only thing, and you're going to have, I keep saying it, you can, you can be a casualty in the war, I suppose, but maybe some of us are more partisan. We're not going to allow that. I certainly haven't been. I'm just not wired to allow it somehow. It's a, okay, a character defect. I'm going to look for, and I have been, and I have found the Achilles heels. Wherever I find them, I know to look for them. I know where I'm looking for them, and they can be found. We're not that helpless. We do have to do some study. We are up against these things. I don't necessarily get so buried 
that there are secret contracts. There's all kinds of secret contracts for the government. That's what national security is. But when you see them being foisted on the people themselves, like 9-11, I told you the extension of, of 9-11 would be, would be coming uh, on the medical martial law coming that hadn't happened yet early in the year. Uh, here we just have the proof of that. So I guess the point is I don't get buried in it. They're there. Confirmation. They're telling you, you better start focusing on what you need to do local. And I don't think just storing up a bunch of food and getting your ammunition is the kind of pre preparation I'm talking about. I'm saying prepare quickly and act. We can shut down the things where they're going to vaccines, COVID-19, something they can't test, they're bringing a vaccine. They're bringing it by a military maneuver, quick like a bunny to you, utilizing corporations to do that. Now, I hear Walgreens and someone else is on tap. It's all a military exercise against you. This is a war. Whether you want to really ignore, uh, ignore it, I don't know. But we can stop it. Once you stop it, there's no certification in your state or county to start with, which you can expand to the state. You stop this whole machine from coming and taking your life without firing a shot. Oh, wait a minute. They are going to fire a shot, aren't they? It's just not going to be necessarily lead. Maybe a little bit of thimerosal. Maybe a little bit of squealing. Maybe a little bit of human DNA. Maybe a little bit of genetically modified material allowed by the International Biodiversity Convention. Maybe. All right. You are under attack. So, thank you for both the, the people, Whitney Webb and the American Vagabond. Don't know either one. I know I don't get much response to, by anybody, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but there it is. Some more information. What are you going to do with that? I would say you're not going to do anything with it directly. You're going to know this is an imperative that's moving. They didn't call it Operation Warp Speed for nothing. But you're going to have to have more than your resist in order to stop this. And one of the best ways to do that would be start getting practiced up on things like a COVID, getting the record made that they don't have actually have anything, identify that the things they responded to. See, we I haven't been going down the administrative breach track. They offer you... They, they require an administration of government that they do it properly without breach. Each one of those types of violations, now I was trying to do some quick check, but with so much to go on, I didn't find what I was doing. I had it somewhere. Um, in fact, it was out of the UK. UK is kind of fun that way. They have a lot of this stuff ready to read. You can read all about the administrative problems that can happen when uh, administrators, government officials, don't admit, minister to you in administrative capacities correctly. It's like big crimes. And, and so uh, none of the words came to my mind. I couldn't find it all. But this is what's underpinning all this as well that you could go after that I don't. Uh, I, I'm after the first. Uh, just go to the legislative side first. Then maybe we'll go after the administrator. But some of you may not feel too confident, I suppose, to do that side. It's easier, maybe easier to do the administrator. It won't get you so far so fast, but you still build that record, and that's really important. But how Operation Warp Speed's big vaccine contracts could stay secret? Well, if it's a national security, it's going to. Okay, so I just want to point out, I'm not going to get lost the fact that they're there. Great work to uncover it. It's confirmation, for the, and you have to prove all that as well. But it's just the theme that you're in. we're into something that's beyond us and really capable. And we can blame it. We can point to what? With deep state or all that nonsense. They're coming to hurt you. They're coming to hurt you. And they're doing, and they don't care. They absolutely do not care. I don't understand all of it, actually. But I can see its function. And I know them when I see them is that Lieber code thing, remember? Okay? That they can find CIA involvement, that they can find secret contracts, they can get military contractors. As I told you, the military was there. That when the military was there, what they were telegraphing to you is that they think you're a human animal, and that military is treating you as a veterinary for your care. That's how the military actually gets involved through this. I told you that. You can go research it yourself. So we're back to you being a domesticated animal that the military underneath administrative districts are going to care and treat you by inoculation, even of something that's not findable. And you see Trump's not going to relinqu relinquish that position. No, he just got sick and, and beat it. So now it's, oh, I told you it was going to be a promotion. It was. It is a promotion. They're moving at warp speed to militarize your country, put in the place the 
conditions and tracking, because they're going to track this stuff as soon as they give it out. It starts everybody on the supposed infectious agent, while they then start promoting, as people are starting to see, and as I broached just as briefly on the word syndemic, that they are going to bring that into non non-communicable disease. Yeah, I had a big blank. Anyway, so we got back. We're back to that <laughs> non-communicable diseases. So your non-communicable diseases, all those comorbidities we talked about that are actually killing y'all, those are going to be what they're going to track and trace. Now you think how are you getting away from that? I told you your life, your existence is a threat, a comorbidity to the environmental health of the green religious, whether they're Republican or Democrat, however you want to point it out, it's all promoting. Moving into the pro a potential problem and a notice to us, the quiet death of a RAC, a strange cultures. Interesting story, that until recently, the recombinant DNA advisory committee, the RAC advisory committee, served as the country's highest level review body from, for novel biotech research safety questions. Well, I don't know. They haven't been serving us very well, have they? But anyway, they're there, and I'll tell you, this is kind of important for those of you that don't want to do the judicial side, but want to start filling the hole here. I've talked about these racks before. Not this rack, but the rack, the advisory councils that come through the federal government. There's actually statutes for this. This is an actual agency aid that they give advice inside the agency as an advisor to decisions where the agency is the lead over their contribution. But the DIH disbanded it last year, the, this research, the safety questions rack advisory council. That, that leaves in most circumstances the frequently dysfunctional local institutional biosafety committees to which the first and last line of defense against the real stupid ideas and screw-ups is to block. Uh, I'm not going to. Okay, so I recently wrote. I didn't write. The author recently wrote a piece of the RAC sees demise for Third World Network. It's intended for an international audience, but should work just fine for interested people at home as well. The seven-page paper describes the RAC's historic role in biotech oversight and the curious decision to disband it. In many eyes, was the centerpiece of biotech research oversight in the United States and the influence in the U.S. interest around the world. So, careful as I talked about the military, U.S. interest is the military interests. So, be careful on what this Iraq was really doing. This gives us a notice, though, for those of you that are wired administratively. Remember, I told you the RAC is really just an advisory council to an agency. This is probably the NIH. That does not stop the oversight, and it's not as efficient. Whether this was really efficient and helpful, I don't know. Maybe gave them a good thing to say, oh, well, we have a safety committee. You may be able to be focused on being the backstop for what they just took out by your involvement in comment and be one of the people that involves yourself like I have through Jefferson Mining District writing comments against public land management policies and um, federal registers to show, to, well, just to comment again, and typically we're showing the illegality in certain areas encroaching on trust breaches. We were that witness. You can, you can, if you're interested in this biosafety thing, you can be watching this. This is just reminding me, well, that rack was inside the government agency's wheel anyway. This shows us that they pulled that away and it's not as inefficient as an efficient uh, response, but those of you that are organized can come together and be the witness for the very same policies that have to come through the, the Federal Register. It sounds like it's futile, and, it, and in some instances you might think that it is, and in some instances you can see that it is. But I, we, I've found, for us, it's really a stumbling block. It was so much a stumbling block what we were doing as Jefferson Mining District against withdrawals, let's say, that the agent, the BLM stopped. They couldn't get any withdrawal through. Withdrawing land for mineral development, which you should be terrified at because that's the mineral only develops where it is. It's not anywhere else. And so you keep that from people. You're taking away wealth, jobs. You're taking away economy. You're taking away future substance and the ability to get substance. 
and you're then forcing everybody into this debt system that they have built for you. So withdrawals is a really big deal. The public land was supposed to be used for the people. Well, if the mineral is there, it's the only place you get the mineral. You have to, you're not supposed to withdraw it. Well, they're trust breaching like crazy. Well, the agency couldn't do it. What they did to get, and I think they did it to get around what we were doing, they went and they but secretly, I want to talk about secret contracts, they secretly petitioned the legislature, the Congress, and that was that time I told you that they enacted a, a sweeping withdrawal of lands from mineral entry across Oregon, Idaho, or the rest, all the West. I don't remember now how many, maybe a million, couple million acres was taken out of production. They stole from the posterity. They stole from the current people today. And they had, they, the, I told you then, the Congress has no qualms, but Republican or Democrat, no qualms to violate their own, their own uh, trust, their own obligations, which were established back before the mining law. This is another detail that lawyers miss. And this is up to us. We, you can be an obstruction. We don't have enough people, apparently. We needed a whole bunch more the district needed more people that were active and, and talking with the Congress people to identify for them their breach before it happened. We, we didn't have that. And so we now see, we should, um, is what I explained, you can be a stop, but we need more people that care to step forward to help. Many hands make light work, but in this case we had coverage. We didn't have the coverage. We stopped them by administrative comment. They went and did a different style of, of breach. Another type of theft. I'm not feeling that that was futile what we did. We held them off. In fact, we probably saved a lot of people in production for a long time that way. But ultimately, they'll be the criminals that they are. For that, I need help. I need help. The district need help. You need help. What your issues are, you need help. But you have to start. We were the start. We started with comments. We started by attacking racks that were inside the federal law. We, we attacked people that said they were in favor of production and yet they were racks and outed them. We needed that witness. So to me this was an administrative function notice. They've pulled back protection for biosafety, whatever that was or was not. And it reminds me to tell you the people are having a position that can be sitting there. If you don't want to get involved anywhere else, it's it's Again, you have a you have to learn the subject matter. It takes a little bit of a steep curve running up. Not that hard, actually. It's one subject matter, and then you get to stay in there and you get to file paperwork. Not with the, an authority like you're making up, like you're the authority you bring is the authority of the lines they can't cross. And if you're on on your game, they can't cross them, and they don't. I've been really uh, pro impressed. Once you call them out, if you don't call them out, they cross the lines all the time because there's no witness to the crime. Once you're there, they can't do it. And then if you have ideas like real good, I mean, ideas that answer the problem or find out that it's not even what they were looking at and you bring that evidence, you'd be surprised at how effectual you could be. And I'm just, my, that thought is, for us, there was the greater sage grouse. The guy, my colleague, happened to be, university papered guy who's a minor, a mineral state grantee, who is the tip of a spear where he, in the county he's at, and through his expertise and his notoriety with his paperwork, he could gain entry through the district that we couldn't get before, and he was able, because of his training, to look and see what the red, real predator of the sage, greater sage grouse was, and through his work was, was able to identify it wasn't man, it wasn't the ranchers, it wasn't the miners. In fact, his mining claim has is known by the BLM to have more ant wildlife than more birds, more sage grouse, more everything than anybody else because he knows the nature of the habitat and he knows, and like I do, it takes man to do that. Man actually enhances the environment contrary to what you've been heard. Well, we bring all that and we bring the fact by we I say we went through the district as comments. These racks were against us. We brought the comment in the reality. We were the only witness, and we identified, he'd identified, that the state bird, well, I think it's a state bird, was the actual predator, and we were able to then move legislators to identify what the real action was, and that threat for a long time stopped until the BLM reinvigorated, but not where we are, about the sage-grouse enclosing land. 
we were able to shut it down. And we were also able to have the expertise and, and knowledge to be able to show what the real problem was. And when you bring that kind of a so-called solution, they have to fix that one. And so I'm just reading here. If you're interested in biosecurity safety and all that, maybe some of you, instead of telling me how much how bad vaccines are and all that, maybe you should focus all your knowledge on something like this. This is like an open door. They're telling you there's a vulner potential vulnerability. You're a backstop to this. This very thing, and it's all administrative. Everything I've told you on how to address this is available to you here. On, on absolutely non-threatening. Are you going to be completely effectual? I can't say that you are, but I can't say that we were uneffectual, and I can't say that we weren't. Well, I think we made a big impression. In fact, so much of an impression about we were witnesses to the crime they were planning that they couldn't, and they had to find another more substantial way to do it. And they figured that out, but it took them a while. On this kind of a thing, I'm not so sure. If you, if you don't come, if you don't come with your hysteria and you come with the facts, and you understand what I've been telling you, you're going to go a long way. So they're giving us notice that they're going to really be, apparently somehow they've figured they're going. There's no more need for safety, biosafety. They figured they think they're going to do it a different way. I'm telling you, the people and those of you that are interested, you want to talk about chemtrails or vaccines or uh, medical malpractice. Vet rights, all that stuff is there for you instead of endless tweeting, endless social engagement, this nonsense, endless opinionating, and what you could take all that energy and that knowledge and actually focus it on something that could actually get something done. So, yes, there's, that's my pitch for us getting involved in other ways while they attempt to pull back all the stops to harm us more on a machine that's well-oiled and well-funded and well-capable to and well-willing to harm all of us. I can't stop that. Even you, one of you that listens to me, you can't stop that. We have the ability to. It won't happen if we, as I put on my Twitter, bloviate. We have to take some action. And, and if we don't take the action to try, we don't even dare to say we tried that much, and then we have no complaint. You want to talk about vote harder or don't vote or whatever? No, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying, no, you get active with whomever's in an office, and you start to show that they had a certain type of obligation. And to that, the Tennessee court case of David Tullis is going to explain that as well because of, of what it addresses. It says there's a statute. You didn't, you didn't provide evidence of your compliance. Stop this. Shut down, this, shut down the charade. What kind of a charade can it be? Measles virus put to the test. Dr. Stefan Lenka wins in court. Since the early 1990s, German biologist Dr. Stefan Lenka has been at the forefront of challenging the medical theory stating that viruses are the cause of infectious disease such as hepatitis, AIDS, the flu, polio, herpes, or measles. Caroline Markelin was presented Dr. Lenka's activities in her lecture video, Virus Mania, with a link if you want this link. In a greater detail, watch part two of the recordings. Based on his studies of virology, Dr. Lenka discovered that viruses are vital components of simple life forms that do not exist in complex organisms such as humans, animals, or plants. His research shows that the virus is believed to cause, quote, viral infections, or in reality, ordinary cells that have been misinterpreted as in con as constituents of viruses in question. Dr. Lenk also determined that viruses don't have a destructive effect on the host, as commonly believed. These findings are in full accordance with the discoveries of Dr. Reich Geard Hamer, who dis demonstrated already in the 1980s that contrary to the standard theory, microbes do not harm the organism but play instead a supportive role in the healing process of diseases. I'm not going to go on and read more. This case was actually not as direct as we might think. This was actually based on a suit that uh, I guess this gentleman offered money to prove the viruses existed and some people answered. Uh, the lawsuit was that he didn't pay. The lawsuit was to get him to pay. The court found that the applicant did not fulfill the terms of the of the offer and therefore was not did not prove it the in the way that it was supposed to did not disprove it or whatever, and so the court did not award the money. So I'd be careful to take this as a proof that measles isn't a virus. However, it does say that nobody, he didn't have to pay out 
but the five or six minds of focused of experts on the matter could not and have not yet addressed this theory to prove it. And so I don't want to go to the point that says this proves that this is not, theory is wrong. I'm just going to say be careful on how we look at this, but notice, again, there is no evidence for the theory. There's actually more evidence, in my mind, that the, super con the Earth can create superconductivity given the coexistence of hydrogen, carbon, sulfur, and pressure uh, than there is for a viral uh, contagion, which I will still assert is more of a chemical payload than it is a biological life form. And so, just another piece of information to be used. We are ignorant, so ignorant in lots of ways, and yet people in authority, so-called politicians, usurpers of power, will take this lack of, this ignorance in us and in the actual so-called science that they will profess they're using and destroy everything. And if you don't want that to happen in your life, you anyway, it doesn't have to do with something as grand as the, as the COVID uh, crime. It, it, you have to stop it in your life. It's just like a, a neighbor, a bad neighbor, doing bad things. Uh, and we see here, we talked about microorganisms working together, not killing this and that and the other. Well, they all interact at some point. This is another thing underlying all of this viral nonsense. If they interact and, and they're mutating, then what What are they? Any? How do they stay? What are they doing? How do they interact? Well, this scarlet fever is making a comeback after being infected with a toxic virus. And so here you read that nature gets together to help itself. And this is the synergistic life forms. Our bodies are this one, maybe trillions of different types of things, of organisms, if you will, moving, going on, the interactions. We're all working together. You wouldn't exist without the flora and fauna, I suppose, in your gut. It just wouldn't happen. This thing wouldn't, this place, this, you wouldn't be who you are without this wondrous thing we don't even know that works all by itself. But here we have scarlet fever epide epidemics are deadly to children across the globe in the 1800s. But in recent decades, concern about the disease has largely faded from the minds of medical experts, in part due to powerful power of antibiotics. Not vaccines, antibiotics. This is why the bacteria, not a virus, causing scarlet fever, bacteria would be throw, that bacteria in your system would throw the PCR test positive. They would blame it on COVID, I will point out. The bacteria causing scarlet fever has acquired toxins called superantigens. It is believed, uh, these are points, it is believed that uh, to, to have been played a role in the recent scarlet fever outbreaks in Asia and the UK. Here we have, it is believed. Here, let's keep going. We're just, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the inter interaction of nature here more than the, than the role that we play to ourselves in the media. The superantigens are, have increased the virulence of the disease, researchers say. Recently, the, though, the bacteria responsible for scarlet fever Scarlet fever has been mutating and making a resurgence. New research from the, by scientists at the University of Queensland, in collaboration with scientists around the world, has suggested that Staphylococcus pyogenes genus bacteria is growing stronger after being infected by viruses. So even bacteria catch colds, have flu-like symptoms like COVID. How's that? And so, pretty interesting statement. Again, nature fortifying itself. This is what nature does. And so we have where we heard before that there's interactions that go on that may alter how we need to look at this. Here we have a, a bacteria catching a cold, making itself stronger. Well, if that's the model, how are we becoming weaker? Uh, not for an analysis here, just as a thought. I mean, how are, we, how are they saying that because we catch this stuff, it makes us weaker? How are they going to move from this invisible boogie virus into what we call comorbidities, which are actually diseases because of certain, well, who knows what they're called. We don't even know that. We just know that we're being affected by symptoms that we can seemingly identify as things that we call obesity, malnutrition, respiratory failure, influenza, pneumonia, all these ailments that we have, disease, that is not infectious, but even that is not proven either. Our minds are a pretty powerful conduit. Anyway, 
Uh, the odd bacterium appears to protect its host from damaging effects of stress. So we see the interplay of nature and things. As man goes through it, finding out that nature does some pretty cool, interesting things. Now, how are we going to anticipate all that? Is, it seems to be an impossibility at some point. And so back again, that just even feeds into the idea that you think that COVID is something, all these billions, instead of solving problems, are being spent to line people's pockets, empower them more to defeat you faster, militarily no less, rolled out. The scientists have isolated a unique molecule, molecular pattern. Uh, that, that Okay, all these things I read. The pattern is another interesting thing, like geometry. The geometry of things, how things are put together, their shape, which also re is resonance at some point, and angular receptivity or resistivity is all important. We kind of miss a lot. So right here, the pattern of the molecules that might one day ex express a stress vaccine, in quotes here, to, ex to exist uh, for real, and they found it hidden inside a bacterium that thrives in dirt. I should just stop right there and not go on. You all should go become farmers. Right? And this is what we did when we were kids. I remember being told I ate earthworms. Look, should I have admitted to that? And maybe that's where I was getting all my, my lack of stress, which because I was eating dirt. I, I don't know. Bacterium vacae is a non-pathogenic bacterium that lives in soil and has shown considerable promise in health research. Now a new study may have finally figured out, again, our ignorance, just uncovering the nature of, that exists here, beneficial to us, like I said, gut bacteria, in uh, good good ones help us to exist, even be alive. Now, here's one that's in the dirt. Maybe that's where we get it. Maybe we ate it all. When we got closer to the farm, maybe this is how we, we were able to keep nice, calm, cool, calm, collected, think about neat things, be peaceful. And when we got extracted from that and put into processing, we lost all these subnutrients, micronutrients, microbiology that was a synergy, a synergy, a synergistic effect that is being now adulterated in the new, what we hear the word now coming, the syndemic, the syner, synergistic pandemic. See, they're, they're bringing all the, all your, your life now is, is a crime and they're going to be tracking and tracing that it doesn't have to be infectious. And I'm talking right now because I'm, I'm anticipating looking at someone's work who's just going to give you a list of things of the work they did. I'm going to try and present that next week. I got to it way too late. And it's all in this, this whole theme. is just right here before us to see. Here's a bacteria in the dirt. How about if we all go back to the dirt? How about if we start working in the dirt? Get some dirt in our fingers and then go have a sandwich. The, st the findings suggest that a specific kind of fat inside the M back hay could be why exposure to this seemingly bacterium, uh, seemingly beneficial bacterium in ground soil may be good for us. Again, may. But I'm still here after eating earthworms and dirt. And with that, I'll be with you next week, Tech Diffs or Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass.